Hi everyone, my name is Mark Moykins from Big Mount Studio. If you're interested in iOS development and periodically want to learn some cool stuff, then click that subscribe button down below and that bell icon so you can get notified when I come out with new iOS development videos. Okay, in this video I'm going to share with you my three-step process to creating app icons. And to make it even better, I researched and found some free tools that you can use to get started today. But first, let's update our tasks that we're working on. Okay, I'm in Bitbucket and I'm using the free boards that they provide to manage my tasks for this project. And last week, we created the help overlay screens to show the swipe action, so that's done. And this week, we're going to create an app icon. Okay, now let's talk about icons a little bit. App icons don't really give us a lot of space. They're small, and so you want it to be recognizable. So that's why Apple's human interface guidelines encourage us to embrace simplicity. They go on to tell us, Find a single element that captures the essence of your app and express that element in a simple, unique shape. And here are some icons that they use for their apps. Simple, unique shapes. So a single element that captures the essence of your app. For some, this can be the toughest part of the whole process of building apps. But I'll try to make it as easy as possible for you. So finding that single element. Let's be realistic here. <laughs> there might not be one and only one element that captures the essence of your app. I mean, a lot of popular app icons and logos have nothing to do with the app except that it's the first letter of the name of the app, like Facebook. It's just an F. It doesn't capture the essence of their app. So let's not take this part too seriously, except for the part where it talks about embracing simplicity. And that's exactly what the Facebook icon does. It's simple and it embraces simplicity. Okay, now for step one, and that is finding an icon. Now, for this step, I'm going to bring you to one of my favorite sites and show you how we can use it to get some inspiration for an, an app icon. There are many sites out there that have icons, but really I found that this one is the best and I keep coming back to it, so I'm not going to bother with all the others <laughs> because I think this will become your one-stop shop to finding inspiration for app icons or if you want to purchase the icons, they're super cheap and it's such a great deal. So let's dive into it. Let's go to this website and see what it's all about. Okay, we are at the nounproject.com. And as you can see, they show some icons right off the bat. Now, what you can do is you can just start searching for whatever you think describes the essence of your app. So for our example, you know, we're creating an itinerary app. So the general essence of our app might be travel or having fun traveling. So we can just maybe start with the word travel. And as you can see, it will suggest some icons. So, you know, we have suitcases, we have someone carrying a suitcase, airplanes, globes. And if you just start scrolling down, you'll see it just kind of like never ends. It just goes on and on and on, and it will keep suggesting icons. You know, all these things, they all have to do with travel in some way or fashion. So this website is really good at helping you find ideas that are related to your app. Now, another thing that you can do too is if you want even more ideas, maybe you like the compass theme. So you click on that, then you take a look and you see that this icon right here is in a set. It's part of the set of summer and travel glyph icon collection. So if we click on that, we can find even more related icons related to this subject. You know, maybe we want this icon instead, lounge chair or signs or camera. You get the idea. It's a good way to kind of like find and explore other items that might be related to your app or the subject that you're looking for. So let's go through here and let's just find an icon that might express our app. Maybe it's this sun icon. Now, I'm logged in, I create an account. So if I want to download this icon, I just click on this get icon button and you have two choices. You can pay for it or not pay for it. If you pay for it, it's only $2. And guys, that is such a steal because once you pay for it, you can do whatever you want with it. And $2, I mean, that's less than a cup of coffee. Well, depending on where you get your coffee from. But the point is, it's super cheap. So what we're gonna do is, is I'm just going to do the basic download. And what that means is like, you have to give credit to the author. So this is from the company Creative Stall. So thank you for letting us use this in our demonstration today. So I'm gonna click continue. And then you just say, you know, and then they do a little survey, you know, what do you plan on doing with this? And maybe it's just for inspiration. So I'm gonna click it. And because it's for inspiration and I might change some attributes on it, what I'm going to do is I'm going to download the SVG. And that just basically means it's a vector graphic, which means 
it's more easy to change the shape of the object. And you'll see what I'm talking about here. So let's download this. And then what I'm going to do is show it in the finder and then bring this down just so you can see it. And they usually put the attributes in the image itself. Okay, so part one is done. We've hunted for an icon, we found some inspiration. You might even download a few icons and then combine them and make a new one of your own. So what is step two? Well, after you found the icon that looks good, the next step is you wanna create a 1024 by 1024 icon. Well, why 1024 by 1024? That's a good question. So let's go into Xcode and take a look at something. Okay, in Xcode, I clicked on my assets folder here and I click on app icon. And here it has placeholders for all the images that go into your app icon. You know, all the different sizes and purposes for each of these icons. And you notice the largest one is 1024. It's the one for the app store. So it's better to start with a very large size, the largest size, which is 1024 in this case. And then what we're going to do is we're going to start from that largest size. And from it, we're going to generate, we're going to use a tool to generate all the smaller sizes. Okay, good. So we need to produce this larger size, but what tool are we going to use? Well, there are many free tools out there that you can use to do this. And even to my surprise, many of these tools you can just use online inside of a web browser. One such example that we will use today is just one random tool I found called Gravit Designer. I wanted to show you guys a tool that you could use today for free to get started. Or I should say, free at the time of this recording. Now, I'm not sure what the future of Gravit Designer will be. Maybe they'll charge money in the future. But at the time of this recording, it's free. So let's head over to that website and see what we can do. Okay, so we're on Gravit Designer's website. What I'm going to do is use it online. And I'm going to continue without logging in for now. So let's get started with the size. Again, we wanted 1024 by 1024. Okay, so now we have our artboard here. So here's what I'm going to do. We have our image, and let's show that again. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to drag and drop it right on there. And you can see our little image right here. So let's clean this up. Let's expand the layers. And we're going to delete the text. And we're just left with our icon. Well, of course, that's too small, right? Actually, I'm going to do this. I'm going to drag this up here, and I'm going to get rid of this layer right here. So now we just have our image. Okay, we want to increase the size of this, but we don't exactly want it 1024 by 1024. We want to leave some margin around the side there. Now, if you're used to using Sketch, you know there's a scale tool which does a really good job of scaling the size of your image. But I couldn't find one in this tool at this time. Like, I don't know, let's look at Modify here, for example. Transform, yeah, we can't, there's no scaling. There's just some rotating, some flipping. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to manually drag it and see how that works. I'll hold down Shift to maintain the size. And, you know, as you can see, it does a really good job of just maintaining the size that we want. Uh, let's, let's make it a little bit bigger. Okay, and let's make sure it's in the middle. I'm going to click on these alignment tools. Again, this is like Sketch, so it's super easy to find your way around. Okay, this looks good. Now, what I think I'll do is let's expand this, and I'm going to just get rid of this, this one circle right here. Can I do that? No. Yeah, I don't think I can. So here, I'm going to, I'm going to make, uh, let me try this. Let me try to delete these nodes here. Okay, that kind of worked. Now let me just fill in this shape here. <laughs> okay, we'll try the fill. Ah, oh, there we go. Okay, perfect. All right, good. So we got the general shape of our icon. Now the next thing we want to do is we want to add some color to it. So what I need to do is I need to give a background color. And I'm not quite sure how to do this in this tool. So instead what I'll do is I'll just uh, create a shape. Let's make a rectangle. And I'm just going to put that shape on here. Okay, it looks good. And then what I'll do is I'll just uh, give it some color with this fill right here. And of course, let's reorder it so it's behind our image. All right, good. So let's give this a color, and it looks like I can just uh, click on here and choose a color. Or I can use this handy eyedropper tool here. So what I'm going to do is I want to use the colors that are already in my color scheme in my app. So let's go over to my app real quick. And let's go to our colors. And here we have these colors right here. So we kind of we got to make some room here. Now when I record, I record 
I changed the resolution on my screen so it makes it easier for you guys to see. <laughs> so it's going to be pretty tight. Let's see how we can do this here. Oh yeah, this will work. Okay. So we have four colors that we can choose from. And I think what I'll do, I'll go with a darker background. And I'll go with that orange color for the, the sun to really make it pop out, really make it stick out. All right, so let's click on the... Okay, it looks like we can't use the color picker tool. Uh, we can only select colors from inside the browser. Okay, well, that's a bummer. So I guess what I'll do instead is, I think we can click on here. Yeah, we'll just grab the hex color and just put it in there. So we'll go back to our project. I'm going to need this. And for our color, the hex is right here. So let's grab that. If this isn't showing for you, it might be because the input method is on floating point or or 8-bit. So just change it to hexadecimal and you can just grab the hex color from there. And let's go in here and we'll give it the hex color. Alright, that looks good. Now for our sun, let's see if we can change the color there. Uh, it doesn't look like we can change the color. We might have to go into each of these individual items and change the colors on each one. So let's do that. I might speed up the video a little bit here. Let's get this color here. There's the hex. Okay, now I'm going to go through and update the color of all these pieces. And I'll get rid of the borders because that'll save me some time from having to set two colors at one time. Oh, there we go. Okay, so let's update these colors. It looks like you have to select it so you see that red bar and then you can click the trash can icon. Uh, you know, I don't know why I didn't think about this before, but what if we just, uh, let's delete that. And now we can probably use the eyedropper tool since we have the color on there. All right, cool. So let's take a look at what we have here. All right, there's our icon and it looks good. So now what we want to do is we want to export this as an image so we can then go on to the third step, which is creating all the different sizes of our icon. So again, this is 1024 by 1024. We're going to go down here and you'll see this make exportable. So we'll just make sure our layer is selected right here. And we'll click on this add export. And what do we want? A PNG? That's fine. PNG is fine. So we'll click this button to export it. And it just downloaded a new image. All right, cool. Let's show in Finder. And we see our new icon here. Let me just rename this. Okay, so on to the third step, and again, it's producing different size images. And the tool that we're going to use is called App Icon Maker. And again, it's online, and it's free. Yes, you guys, you can start using it today. So let's go to this website and see what it's all about. Okay, this website is totally simple. You just come down here, and you make sure you're clicked on iOS. And then what you're going to do is you're just going to drop your image right on this blue square here. So we have our image right here, so we're just going to take it, we're going to drag it on there. Then we're going to click Generate. Okay, so let's see what it generated for us. We come down here and we can see the icon in all different sizes. And this is a good time to kind of like preview it and see if the smaller sizes work for us. And as you can see, they actually, they look really good. You know, the image that we created was simple. It captures the essence of our app. And even at the smaller sizes, it can be distinguishable enough so other people, when they see the icon, they know it's our app. Okay, do we need all these sizes? Well, maybe not. Let's go into Xcode and see what sizes we need. Let's go back into our assets, click on app icon. We'll make some room here. Now, you know, looking at this part right here, it doesn't really tell you what icons are required, but here's a little trick. So we already have a 1024 icon, right? Let's grab that icon. Let's just stick it in there. Now check this out. If you go to build it, okay, it's going to give you some warnings. And here's where it tells you what's required. So we need a 60-60 uh, 2x image, a 76 by 76 2x image, and a 83.5 2x image. Okay, now when you look at here, you see these are the sizes right here where it says 152, 167, 196. So that really means like 196 by 196. So here, let's see what the first image it wants. It wants a 60 by 60 times two image. So what that means is it actually wants a 120 by 120. You just take this number, the 2x, and you multiply one of these numbers, the 60. So 
60 times two, it's 120. And where do you put that? Uh, let's see, uh, probably right here, iPhone app, iOS 7 through 12, you want the 60 and you want the 2X. So let's get that image. Okay, right here. So I'm just gonna click on it and it just downloads it. And what's the next one we need? A 76, 2X. Okay, 76 times two, that is 152. So we go in here, we want the 152 image. And the next one is 83.5 times two <laughs> is 167. Okay, you gotta brush up on your math skills if you need to figure this thing out. Oh, you guys, you know what else you can do too? I didn't, I didn't know about this until someone showed me. But when you click on Spotlight Search, which is just command space, you can actually do calculations in here. So if you want to do 83.5 times 2, and it just tells you right there, 167. All right, so let's grab that right here. All right, good. So now we have all the icons that we need. So let's go back here. I guess we can expand this now. And let's go to our finder, and we have all the images right here. Okay, so we have the 120, and that looks like it goes right here. And we have a 152, and where is that? That's a 76, 2x right here. And the other one was 83.5, right? It looks like there's only one slot for that, so we'll just stick that in there. Now, don't be afraid to make a mistake, because if you put the wrong size in the wrong place, it'll tell you, it'll show you this little warning icon. So don't worry about it if you make a mistake. Okay, let's build it again. And now that warning is gone, so we should be good to go. Okay, now time to test it. If we look at our simulator, we notice there's no icon on there. That's the default icon that they usually give you. So let's run this. And then let's take a look at the icon here. There it is, there's our new app icon. And you can see over here, if we search for it, you know, it also shows the icon over here too. All right, cool. So that is the minimum that you need to get started. Now, after this video, what I'll probably do is I'll fill in all these other blanks as well. Because what happens is if it doesn't find the size that it needs, then it'll try to get the size from these other existing sizes. So this is the minimum. But it's better to have the correct sizes filled in because the phone will use the correct size and it'll be the sharpest image. All right, great. I showed you how to create an app icon with the three steps. And that app icon we're using isn't the one that we're actually going to be using for this app because we're actually going to be using the one that you see here on the screen. <laughs> so basically what happened is on my Patreon site, I posted four different options for app icons and I let the, my patrons decide which app icon this app is going to use. And this is the one that they selected. So it's cool. This is the one we're going to use. But as you saw in this video, you learned three easy steps to create your own app icon. And that first step was finding an icon that captures the essence of your app or an icon that's at least related to your app. And we used the nounproject.com to find some inspiration. The second step is we found Gravit Designer and we used that online to create a 1024 by 1024 image and we gave it some color. And the third thing we did is we went to App Icon Maker and we gave it our 1024 by 1024 image and it generated all the different sizes we needed. And that's it. So thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, Give it a like, feel free to share it with your friends at work or on social media, subscribe and click on the bell icon so you can get notified when I come out with the next video in this series. And if you really wanna help me out, you can provide a translation for the title and the description of this video in your own native language. And the way you do that is you click on that button down below with the three dots on it below the video and you'll see a place where you can provide a translation. All right guys, thanks for watching.